Okay, so in this uh, problem, we're going to look at this Dirac delta function potential. And this problem's a little bit different from what we've dealing with, with from what we've dealt with before, because uh, this potential is kind of weird in that it's discontinuous. So the Dirac delta function, you know, it's kind of it's zero everywhere except at a point, uh, at and delta of x is zero everywhere except at zero, where it goes to infinity. So our potential basically is zero, and then it jumps to minus infinity, and then it's zero again. So it's a very weird kind of potential, and that will have implications for us later on. But um, so we just want to, you know, tackle this problem like we've done all the other ones. Is we'll obviously have two regions, one to the left of the well and one to the right of the well, and you might try and have another region inside the well, but um, because the well is infinitely thin, you can't really uh, you can't really do that. So we're just going to have these two regions and just hope for the best for now. So uh, what I want to do is I write down my eigenvector equation here. And to the left of the well, the potential is just zero. And to the right of the well, it's just zero. So we, our uh, eigenvector equation will just reduce to the thing that we've seen numerous times before. And if we look at our potential here, we can see that this is kind of like the finite square well in that the potential, the top of our well is at potential zero, meaning that if our energy has an energy, if our particle has an energy greater than zero, then it won't be bound in this well. And so we don't care about those states for now. We only want to look at bound states. So we're going to uh, only look for solutions where E is less than zero. And so we'll do what we did before and write this our energy E as minus the absolute value of E. And that will, means that our solutions to this equation will, well, um, either be Cauch or uh, Shine or just these exponential functions. But it's pretty obvious from our boundary conditions that we know we want our wave function to vanish at minus infinity infinity so that we can normalize our state that we should just pick these exponential functions. So you know, it'll look kind of like this kind of thing. And so that's not too bad to do. And the only thing left is to use our boundary conditions. So uh, we'll try the usual boundary conditions and see what happens. So the first boundary condition is that our wave function should be continuous at our boundary at zero. So phi one of zero should equal phi two of zero. And, and that just tells us that a is equal to b. And then the second boundary condition is that the derivative of our wave function should be continuous at zero. But that tells us that a is equal to minus b. And that's kind of a weird thing because the only solutions to these two constraints is that both a and b are zero, which is a trivial solution. We don't really care about that. So as it turns out, what's happening here is because our uh, potential is not continuous, the solutions to our problem uh, do not have to have continuous derivatives. So in other words, this boundary condition is not the correct one to use. So we need a different boundary condition. And how do we find what the correct boundary condition is? Well, what we can do is, well, we haven't actually used up to this point that we're even dealing with a direct delta well. We've done all this without referring to it. So we definitely need to come back to this equation and use it somehow. And as it turns out, the way that we can derive a boundary condition is by taking this equation and integrating across our uh, delta well. So and we're going to be making use of the property of the Dirac delta that, you know, the integral of a function times uh, delta of x minus a is just equal to the function evaluated at a. So it just picks out the value. So uh, in this case, if we integrate over this delta function, we'll just get phi evaluated at 0. So what we'll do is we'll just take that equation and we will integrate from minus epsilon to epsilon, where epsilon is just a tiny number, because I just want to, the only thing that matters is that I integrate over the delta function, so it doesn't matter how big my range is as long as it covers zero. 
So we're just going to do this integral, and then we'll kind of take the limit as epsilon goes to be really small. So we just need to take the integral of each of these terms, and that's not too bad to do. So the first term, it's, you know, has the second derivative of phi, so the integral of that will just be the first derivative of phi. And then we'll have, you know, phi prime evaluated at epsilon minus phi prime evaluated at minus epsilon. But epsilon is to the right of zero, so we're kind of taking the limit as epsilon goes to zero from the right. So that means we're going to want to use phi 2 prime of zero, because phi 2 is to the right of zero. And then similarly, uh, uh, the other one will be evaluated at minus epsilon, so we'll, we're kind of taking the limit as epsilon goes to zero from the left. So we'll use phi 1. So that's that term. And then this term, we just, again, this will just pick out phi of zero because of the delta function. And then this term, we, when you integrate, you know, as so we take the limit from, as epsilon goes to zero, we're just integrating, you know, over a, a continuous function over no range. So that's, you're basically just summing zero. So you're not going to get anything from this term. So this is just zero. Oh, I forgot to write dx here. Oh, I don't know why it's that color, but whatever. It's fine. So uh, anyway, what we have here is a our uh, correct boundary condition. So we can rewrite this a little bit. So what this is saying is that rather than our uh, derivative of our wave function being continuous at zero, it is discontinuous. Dis discontinuous, and there's so there's a discontinuity of this magnitude. And so we can just, you know, I've worked out these derivatives and things here, so we can easily uh, plug these things in. And what you'll get once you work that out is a equation for k. So as usual, using our boundary condition, it tells us what our eigenvalues are. And in this case, we just have a sim very simple, you know, equation here. And uh, one thing that's been different from our past experiences is that there's only one solution here. It's just, tr it's just straight up telling us what k is, so what the energy is. So there's only one solution. So there's only one bound state for our delta well potential. And so with that, our problem is solved. We can write down phi 1 and phi 2. And then we can even simplify this a little bit and write, um, instead of doing things in a piecewise way, you can just write that phi of x should be a times e to the minus k absolute value of x. And again, you would have to normalize this. But uh, so our problem is, uh, for all intents and purposes, done. So we found from our delta function potential that one, we had to come up with a new boundary condition, which is this. And then using that, we got uh, it worked after we've done that, it, we do the same thing that we always do. We get a constraint on k that tells us what our energy eigenvalues are. And in this case, we only have one solution. So there is one eigenstate and one eigenfunction that looks like this.